Man, oh man, that kiss. Quite the controversial kiss. I'm not really sure. My final take is Subaru is not a groomer. No, he's not. He simply was put up in a position where this girl is so emotionally vulnerable, has no understanding of what love even is, is so dependent and reliant on others right now. And even though the situation seems really shitty and it's kind of set up by Roswell to make this girl be very prone to grooming, I don't think that Subaru forcing a kiss upon her even said dodge it, right? I, I, I think that was simply him showing proof of action that he does love her and he just didn't know what else could convey that message at that time. The kiss happened. It is what it is. Again, I don't think it's grooming. But I could definitely see how it definitely would look like that, right? I don't think he's intentionally doing it. It's just the overall setup and how Super was forced into that position. Or maybe I'm doing defense for a groomer. I'm not really sure. Now, what's going to happen from now on? I hope that we're going to go through Amelia's memories. Trial 1, right? The pre-Frozen Bond memory. One of the most important things that was left out in the cut content last episode wasn't just the forest fight with Otto and him using Aldona after gathering the mana from every creature and he been using a huge earth magic attack. It's that Amelia mentioned mother and goose. That's right, G-E-U-S-E. -E. We saw someone that looked like Better the Goose in the memories along with Mother Fortuna in the, in the Frozen Bond flashback, so it's just like... Betragus' involvement in Amelia's past. What the hell is happening? Let's begin today's reaction. Little Amelia? No, no, Ryuzu. Ryuzu Shima saving Garfield. Yeah, this is what her got her demoted, right? Little Gar, what happened? He doesn't have a scar yet. Oh, he gave himself the scar? What is this imagery? It's a wagon that fell apart. Some car crash happened. Isekai car crash happened that involves his mom maybe and sister? Oh. That is crazy that the scar was such a clean X here even though he was just head, batting, head bashing against the fucking pole. Like, I thought that this scar had like actual Someone did it with like a weapon because it was such a fucking X like that, not rather than just like a bunch of, I don't know, random patches, but this is it. <laughs> Sad. Oh wait, not trial one yet. Did you kill Ram and Otto? There's no way, right? This is the perfect run. There's no way they're dead. You killed him? He didn't, he didn't. So that no one can take the trial? Yeah, and Garfield is scared of the outside world. This is his extreme answer to this, the, the solution, right? Again, like, it pisses me off how Garfield is an antagonist right now. It just feels like he doesn't need to be. But just understanding his, like, backstory about Trial 1 and being how traumatic it is. And the root cause of why he just is, like, being an antagonist is because he doesn't want Amelia to even go through the same thing after seeing how hard she had it. So I guess it makes sense. It's just, goddamn it. He seems single-minded. That's very racist of you. Amelia. Oh. Post-kiss buff Amelia. How crazy is she gonna be now? Is she just gonna do like a little, like, literal 180 switch in her head and just be so competent? What's gonna happen now? The outside that took my mom and sister away. Okay. Hmm? Until today. Yo, that kiss changed her. 
I lived in fear right up until this fucking 17 year old knee just kissed me. And now, I am just Giga Amelia. I'm down to see this. Like, how much is she buffed due to this? That's right. She's independent now, no longer reliant. But now Emilia has the resolve to fight back and attempt to trial again. And don't try to coddle her, Garfield. You should be inspired that Emilia can do this. I don't know if because the root cause of why Garfield's being the antagonist is it comes from sympathy for Emilia too. But if that Emilia is now vouching on her own behalf, saying I can do this, what is Garfield really here doing then? Who are you trying to protect? Yourself? Okay. Maybe. I thought it's the outside world though, not really the mother. And that carriage must have been the thing that just got fucked up, right? At least in the trial one memory flashback we saw. Oh, that's so cute. Wait. Shima was holding Garf. Oh. Look at that! Ryuzushima holding little guard boy, man! Oh. Ooh. How do you like them idioms, bro? You've been just saying random fucking idioms to me that have no meaning? How about some fucking Asian culture of taking the fucking shoes off, huh? Mm. Gave up. <laughs> Pride, scary. Oh, we backing off. Yo, he's moving forward. Oh, shit. Nothing. Bruh. This is too deep. He is literally just. He talked to Garfield, the therapist, got all the fucking intel, the homework of what just like makes him tick, and now we're just destroying him. True. True. Stop directing that at us, bro. What is it? I thought it was like he hates the outside world that took away the mom and the sister, but that may have been rationalizing what his true feelings were. Is his true feelings hatred for mother? Is there something else? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay? Because of like the prejudice? Demi-human, but mom? Ah, oh, something like that. Literally, like, society is like perception on their family because of Garfield and Frederica. Damn. Was that true though? Did mom really not be able to see you? I still don't know if this is the truth. I feel like this is him coping and rationalizing why mom left. Uh, it can't be true, right? Any mom would... And I don't think she's a monster mom either. Monster as in like, not like a beast human or something. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking like... I don't think the mom's a psychopath. I, the, the frames, the pictures that we've seen was pretty kind-hearted. Any mother would gladly suffer whatever fucking reaction from society if it meant to protect their kids. I saw it. What did you see? The cart? Unlucky. <laughs> Do you think Roswell did this? Because, like, in any event, I'm just... <laughs> the Grimard told me at this moment, you're supposed to do a landslide and just bury <laughs> Garfield's mom. And, and, and Roswell's like, all right, sure, fuck it. Here we go. Aldona! Did she actually? It's getting so heavy. That means... Oh, 
俺たちの悲しさも寂しさのために意味があったんだって思わせてほしかった、うん、恨ませてほしかった Bro Another character that joins us and his issue is not really the same as Subaru and Amelia but there's this theme of like I feel guilty I feel like I need to be punished why aren't you doing this to me we just had that with Amelia and Subaru of everyone coddling Amelia we got Subaru doing that shit during the flashback with mom and dad and now Garfield the guilt right is building up and it's like I wanted her to make me hate her but at the end of the day she would never <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> We're really just gonna go through all that heavy fucking baggage. We just you just told me your life story and now all, none of that shit matters. Just still gonna fuck us up, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> no. The rise of Amelia. Amelia's entire platform is based on equality. In the future, if Amelia becomes a monarch, she can make sure that society will no longer have a culture where people like you will feel this sort of hatred from the outside. Come on, man. Not like this, man. Big cat. <laughs> now what? What, what? what? What the fuck do we do against this thing, bro? And a part of me feels like Garfield is still going easy on us. And maybe it's just me reaching, but Garfield just took a step back to transform. I don't know. That whole taking, jumping back to transform makes me feel like Garfield has hesitation in his heart. Because the stepping back to transform implies that if he transformed too close to Subaru, he might instantly die or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm reaching, but what's gonna happen here? The fuck we fight against this right now, Amelia? Ice shit? Oh, Amelia. What, what? what are you gonna do? You're gonna force him to submission? I've never seen your ass fight. I have, but like, not like this. Shamak? I can return by death? Like, what? What? what, what? The gate. Again, it broke. Remember, the constant theme of Super is gate always fucking breaking, right? This is the gate, right? Okay. What's he doing? It must be the crystal, right? He stabbed him with the crystal to suck the mana out of him to make him de-transform? That's the only thing I can think about. What is? Yeah, it is the crystal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It worked. I never. Shit. I never thought of it. Cause like, this thing does hold in mana. It touches a barrier. Sometimes you trans teleport. Sometimes you. Well, there's two separate ones. Garfield and Frederica has one. But shit, I never thought of it like that. We can take him out. Shamak. Easy, but gates broken again. Puck, you slut, you're in there now? But I. Puck assisted. We're gonna need some cut content to explain exactly how he assisted, but Puck clutched. Does Amelia know? Okay, thanks, Puck. <laughs> Don't wuss out and hide behind your blood, you spineless coward. You want to fight me? Fight me by yourself. So, like, the, 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 the implication here is that if you hide behind your blood, it means that, like, you're using your beast blood to transform and it's an unfair fight. So, 
<laughs> fucking fight me <laughs> in your humanoid form, you fraud. バカにしてんだ。俺たちは外の世界に挑む。聖域は開かれる。お前が。ウォーファッキングレインスタート。誰がいるした。誰がいるした。I it's the repeated theme of Subaru always wanted to do things by himself due to his own pride and ego and wanting to prove himself and his worth, but learn what strength in numbers means. And like you would think that Subaru has learned how to like ask for help and reach out for help, and he did in season one, but in season two, he stopped doing that. And Tape has said in a QA that he kind of like reverts back to his old ways due to Rem. That whole like the Rem interaction, he feels guilty, he feels like he needs to do it himself or something, but hey, look at that. Strength in numbers. Powerful friends. You gotta do it together. Wow, he tanked that? Damn? Wow? That's a tooth. He spat a tooth out. That might be the most manliest thing Subaru has ever done. What is like the other, like, I'm talking just like macho fucking just testosterone filled just manly thing. I feel like this is it. Tanking Garfield's punch and spitting his tooth out is insane. Garfield, <laughs> Opening. Starting line of your resolve. Taking a little inspiration from Roswell, maybe, huh? And me, Rem? Rem? <laughs> Purple aura. Yo, is this the? Are we about to have a fucking authority moment? Cause I've been begging, brother. You have like fucking. Um, you have the authority slot in there. It's been stimulated. Now it's gonna not be the unseen hand, right? It adapts to the person's like personality. Maybe the the name is still the same, but like it should change, right? It's said that a witch factor and like the authority changes on the person's personality, but like it's it's fucking. Bumping! It's beating! What's gonna happen? <laughs> What's happening? It's, it's, it's unseen hand, right? It's basically that. If you get a mini fucking hand come, it's not as many as better uses, but like, holy shit. This actually changes fucking everything. Like, up until now, there has been no actual attacks that Subaru could do. It's always just like strategy, utility, being a team role player and leader. But now he has something that he can actually fucking fight with beyond just Shamak and just AoE taunts. Yo, I want this hand. I. I need him to do the Natsuki Subaru pose with the unseen hand. This this thing needs to suddenly go. He, he needs to do that, bro. <laughs> Garfield, go down. Garfield, come on. Bro, we had like four separate fucking talk no jutsus. We we'd have we, there's been like six separate things we've done to you're still up? What are you doing? Please stop. He's pretty much done. Very durable guy. Amelia? Amelia? Patrash! Patrash! Everybody coming! Yes. Bro, 
got the fucking Betrigus treatment, bro? <laughs> the last time I see Patrash do this shit was on Betrigus season one, man. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, like, sh surely he'll go down after this, right? <laughs> the prideful land dragon. Yo, he took he took that personally. Patras took that personally. He ain't for she ain't forgetting that. Yeah. Get his ass, Patras. <laughs> what a triumphant cry. <laughs> Watching it back up. Please stay down. Yeah, power friendship. <laughs> Idioms. Idioms. Alright. We're good. Damn. Oh. Shadow Garden? Shadow Garden? I don't know. Okay, what's going on? Remember. Subaru is implied or it's pretty much confirmed. Like, other people are saying that he has, you know, uh, like, I think he has two witch factors, right? The witch factor of Sloth is obviously the one we got from season one, but... It's also pretty much hinted, if not near damn confirmed, that the Witch Factor of Envy is what grants him return by death. This new authority, right, is Authority of Sloth. I'm not sure what he's going to name it, maybe Unseen Hand, the Hand. But Return by Death, I just feel like it's still not really Subaru. Like, I feel like it's not the same as this because it feels like we're, used, we're borrowing that power from Sato as we don't have complete control over the tech points and stuff. I don't know. But I feel like... At the end of the day, he does have two witch factors right now, Sloth and Envy. This is the authority of Sloth. Authority of Envy is returned by death. I don't know if we're somehow borrowing it using Satal as a fucking proxy. But at this rate, can we just assume he's going to just consume or kill other Archbishops, collect their witch factors as well? He is the Uniter, right? He is the Uniter. Pleiades, Constellation, literally means Uniter. Not only is he uniting powerful friends, allies, but also the witch factors, six archbishops, six witch factors, excluding envy. It's just, it's gonna fucking have everything. <laughs> what was that cat noise, bro? <laughs> Unperceived impact? Oh, that's so cringe. <laughs> Un <laughs> authority of Slav, the invisible will of God. Oh God, brother, is it <laughs> really? Is that what you're gonna call it? Invisible providence to Oh, invisible. Pro oh, Lapalu? But invisible providence. A lot of fucking syllables. Invisible providence. All right, invisible providence. Authority of Sloth. <laughs> Invisible Providence. My new power, Emilia. I'm cool now. Lap pillow. Third lap pillow, right? We actually overcame Garfield. Everything is looking so good. Patrash? Oto. Everyone's alive. I told you not to do anything reckless, right? This is basically like, I'm so glad you're alive, but you were too reckless. Now you're getting punished for it. Come on. <laughs> Best friends. Friends, come on. Emilia is just Emilia. That's what the soundtrack played, bro. <laughs> season, season one, bro. Arc one at the end. All right. I, 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 want, I, want, I want your Namae, baby. And the soundtrack starts playing. Emilia. It's just Emilia, but now it's playing for Oto and Subaru, bro. This piano riff right here. Oto Suen. Patrash too. Patrash wants some affection. Okay. Patrash best girl. Oh, Garfield getting his own lap pillow with Ram. Okay. Ram can give a lap pillow? I, I just never expected Ram. I don't know. As soon as Garfield gets up, Ram's just gonna shit on him, right? Be like, huh, 
Look at you weak ass relying on a girl. Fucking pathetic lying on her lap. Mm. Yo. Yeah, he's the best girl. Yeah. <laughs> Ram, just dude, 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 you cannot beat her personality. You can't. You you can't tell me that this girl isn't fucking amazing. How how bro? Any other girl, just like, oh hello, my little prince. Oh, you like the lap pillow? Ram's like, huh, you wait, get the fuck off me, bitch. <laughs> Based. <laughs> I love her so much, bro. That's what's the- that's the- her charm. Not yet. Not yet, bro. True. <laughs> she's saying the quiet part out loud, bro. Holy shit, she's not holding back. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Perfect loser. How long must you carry on from the woman you love? Before you say, oh my god, Ram just know that. I just love how like how just like cold and brash they are, but like she knows, you know. She she knows that like Garf is in love with her and, and that Garf will probably knows that like Ram kinda likes him too. It's just this relationship is hilarious to me. Giving up is easy, right? No, it's hard. Don't give up. You're my hero, Garfield. Aww, best girl, Ram. Wow, that's a rare smile. Extremely rare. We hardly ever see her do this. All right, Garf's taking the trial too. Okay. Everyone's taking the trial. Here we go. Past time. Oh shit. It's the landslide pre-moment. The cart. Okay. He's now gonna witness true intent on mom leaving, right? It's not to find her happiness and leave the kids behind. There's gotta be a different thing Garfield realizes. <laughs> Chill, Garfield. Let let the past past fucking play out. Chill, the fuck out, bro. <laughs> Just watch the movie. Garfield. <laughs> Where's she going? Alright, here's the gifts. One for you, one for Garf. Where are you going, Mom? To get Garfield's dad back. This is the truth, man. Nah. That's what you made up in your own head to cope with your own guilt and insecurity. Oh. The hell? Time froze? I mean, yeah, I mean, Super was also interacting with other people. Yeah, it's different, right? When Super was doing trial one, he was interacting with other people. Here, Garth almost like looking 
from like a third person perspective, but now Frederica interacting. To find dad. Mm, you took the easy way out. <laughs> That's right, the coping. Shiranai he doesn't want to remember it hurts him too much. The placement on the kiss, bro. There's even more reasoning on the fucking positioning of his fucking scar. Okay. <laughs> Did he pass? Liberate the sanctuary together. Get out. <laughs> Get out of the sanctuary. Meet you. <laughs> Me? Okay, he's been corrected. Everyone else. Loved me. There it is. Hey, we're all good. Now, that Frederica talking specifically to Garfield, is this Echidna? How does this work? I'm not really sure because these are like characters used to create a path of Garfield's memories, just like our mom and dad. That's why I say when mom was saying all that shit about as long as the ends justifies the means, I'm like, don't you think a kid is fucking making her say that or something? But uh, it is from the memories, but it's interesting how this one just like reached out to Garfield and talked to him. It was very self aware about how. Bro, like, I'm a fucking remnant of the past. I'm a young fucking sister right now. I mean, if you expect your, to ask your big sister who's younger right now, then you truly are hopeless, but it looks like he's corrected. Does he still have to do trial 2 and 3 now? I don't know. They're, they're like all the same. He did it. Oh. He's good. There we go. Matured Garfield. No, I think we can see it. You look way more calmed, relaxed, mature. That's right. Yeah, Garfield just went in there just to get therapy real quick. Trial 1 is pretty good for just getting like therapy and closure, huh? You don't have to do child two and three. Now, Amelia, you go in there and fucking do your thing. Because yeah. of you guys. Aww. <laughs> you can't even make eye contact when it's the Sundere, bro. But we appreciate the sentiment, Garfield. Man, when we do get out of here, I, I want to know how many of those lolly clones we have at our disposal. Because, like, the more I think about how, like, season three is going to happen, and season three is going to be a whole out war, right? Battle? Bro, our lolly suicide bombers just, like, what kind of scene will that be when Subaru or Garfield orders the lolly suicide bombers to all fucking just charge in? Maybe that never happens, but let's keep that in mind. Boss? Boss? I think Garfield has just submitted under Subaru right there. Boss? Okay. You're the big boss now. New brother. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 14. <laughs> yeah, then demi humans age differently, bro. I mean, it's, it's, it's a demi human, right? It's a beast, man. It's, it's got different blood, different quality, bro. Yeah. Not, not only is he an eighth grader, 
He's also a demi-human 8th grader, right? So it really makes sense on his, like, intelligence, emotional intelligence. His, like, it's just all the shit he's done up till now, right? It, everything does make sense. Emilia, you better be able to do this. I swear to God, Amelia, if you fucking fail immediately. Oh, a kiss! Yeah, about that! What's up, what's up, baby girl? You want, a, you, want, you want another one? You want another one? Yeah, yeah, you, you, want, you want another kiss for a good luck charm? What is it? Oh. It's a lot to her, bro. Oh my god, that kiss. So, like, what? After this, we're gonna talk about it? Mm. Oh, what kind of conversation is that gonna be? So, like, that kiss. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What, what are we gonna talk about, bro? <sighs> yeah, imagine it. He, she rejects him. <laughs> it, it means a lot to me that you stole my first kiss. And that's not cool. I was not in the right mind space. Now that I've matured and got over my trauma, you groomed me. You took advantage of me in my emotionally vulnerable state. Shame on you. Shame on you. No, that's, no, that's not going to happen. That's not what's going to happen. Emilia Tan kiss buff. She's a different girl. No, it really does look like, like last episode's impact on Emilia. She's totally different like the way that she holds herself has been totally different this episode so i have high hopes Dato, another date good luck cars and boys i don't think cars will exist back then now we wait well guilty luck that's the uh the witch fiend that we actually had to fight with, right? That Mary was controlling. That came one step short. What does this idiom mean? You can't be much of a man if you keep looking all word. Just be cool. That idiom pertains to how he needs to just like remain his composure and be cool. Okay. That's right, eighth grader. Hmm? What is it? Hmm? Are oh, you saw that kiss? What? How many people saw that kiss? Hold on a moment. Yeah? Oh, that's desperate? Desperate? The, 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 the kiss? <laughs> what? But you should also go for your own kiss for Ram? What is that? What are you talking about? <laughs> you gonna call me a dumbass? You you seriously, after all of this shit, you gonna call me a dumbass? <laughs> Bruh. He is a kid. Nah, who's seen it, right? Garfield's seen it? Echidna. 100% saw it when for fucking seething, right? Who else is there? I don't know. I wonder if this is gonna be the new joke. You know how they like made fun of us for the lap pillow in season one? <laughs> like about that kiss, right? What? Oh. Oh. He vandalized the witch's graveyard to give Amelia hope and just motivation. A kid now malting. A kid that just fucking molding. Okay, this is what Subaru is talking about with Garfield. It's not the kiss scene. It's about this moment. Got it. Got it. I think the kiss would have been more funny, but I guess this is funny too. It's even more funny if you think about like fucking Echidna just watching this. Echidna straight up like, you're vandalizing my graveyard for another girl. You've already cucked me. You, did you reject me? Then you do this shit for another girl in my own graveyard. Echidna seething, molding. And this is the reason why he broke the promise late at night, which might then, you know, it justifies everything. I hope she realizes this is the reason why we, you know, left off that night. There's a bunch of pucks, bro. There's a lot of pucks. Yeah. That's why I left. Then you breaking promises good. <laughs> you could you call you call a Nick Kumpu? 
Aren't you glad that he broke that promise? Alright. Alright, let's go. Memory to the past, let's go. Yeah. We're kidna. Okay, so what is their relationship? Because like from the beginning, Echidna kind of was hinted to kind of like know Amelia. Because Echidna was like, oh, so that's the root of your desires. So like what is what are they all about? Okay, their relationship is not good. <laughs> you loose woman? <laughs> loose? <laughs> Who kisses up? Oh, he... <laughs> she took that so seriously. Loose. <laughs> oh my god, she's so mad. <laughs> Which is daughter in a literal sense or a metaphorical sense? Because whenever you say Majo, usually they refer to the witch of Envy Satala. Emilia Satala's daughter? Uh, metaphorically? I don't really know, but let's keep that in mind as we move forward. She's doing it! She's... I am the frozen witch boy. What the? Okay, the pose is amazing. Taking inspiration from Subaru, but some of the dialogue here is fucking shocking me. You call her a witch's daughter. She calls herself the frozen witch by title, right? It's not like you're an actual witch, right? Ooh. Okay! I, this is giving me just shades of Subaru. Like everything she just said here, I feel like is in reference to Subaru, right? Holy shit. And yeah, maybe it's a self-proclaimed witch, but that whole scene at the end, with the pose, and the declaration, very Subaru-esque. I think definitely Subaru is rubbing off on Amelia. And that's today's episode. Today's episode was great in terms of handling Garfield. Now, I'm not too invested into Garfield's trauma and stuff, but it is now pretty much hinted or implied that Mama's alive, right? The landslide, there's nothing that really happened other than the cart is getting fucked up. They're all good. And Garfield has now corrected himself. He's gotten over his cognitive dissonance and coping and rationalizing why mom left. At the end of the day, it wasn't to pursue her own happiness. He wanted to find dad. And then there were some amazing fight scenes, bro. Like, the guy, Subaru, again, uses Shamak and breaks the gate. And I think that, like, this is such an intentional thing that Tape has been showing us time after time. Subaru's gate has always been broken or in a damaged state where Ferris had to heal that shit. But even now, we cracked this shit again. Why? There must be some power mechanic, something... That, I don't know, it, it doesn't have to do with the witch factors, I'm not sure. But it is so odd that time after time, Tape has put Subaru in a situation where his gate is compromised again. The un... The un Authority of Sloth, Invisible Providence is its a pretty cool name, kind of wordy. I'm not sure if it's just going to be a single hand coming up, because like, isn't this basically Unseen Hand? Like, like, straight up, like, it, 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 is this shit just, not just Unseen Hand? Because like, what is the difference between Provi Invisible Providence and, and Unseen Hand? You still fucking using a purple fucking hand that comes out. You just have one hand. It's, it's a weaker Unseen Hand, bro. He basically did a rebrand. We don't want to do Unseen Hand anymore. So we got Invisible Providence, aka the Will of God. Ram scenes for fucking peak as usual. And Amelia, from the beginning and even the ending, right? She's changed. That kiss and getting the memories back and being more independent and not relying on Puck and Subaru. Something has changed. And even at the end, that pose she does in reference to Subaru. Even the dialogue that she has. I'm very hopeful. I think this is the run. And she is going to clear it. And we're going to get out of here. Save the mansion too. Get Biako. And it's going to be a happy end. That's it for me. If you're still here though. And if you enjoyed this reaction. Please like the video. Check out the other playlist for humor content. And until next time. Take care.